In a shocking new revelation, researchers have found out that OpenAI owns claimed benchmarks do not hold real or true in the real world problems. If you do not want to watch the rest of the video because it's going to be quite dry where I'm going to just read literally two tweets, TLDR for you. The TLDR is this, OpenAI O1 claimed an SWE benchmark. SWE, Software Engineering Benchmark, is a benchmark where a bunch of GitHub issues are given to the LLMs or agents for them to solve. The number of issues these LLMs or agents solve is basically the benchmark. 40% means 40 GitHub issues out of 100 issues were solved. So OpenAI claimed a benchmark 48%, but in real world GitHub issues, researchers have found that OpenAI holds true only for 30% of cases. In fact, the worst side is Claude 3.5 Sonnet achieves 53%. So this has created a huge confusion in what OpenAI has claimed and what holds real in real life true. And this is what we are going to explore in this video. First of all, what has happened and what could be the possible reason? Did OpenAI really, really blatantly lie? Or there could be something else happening in how they pick what is a benchmark score. It started with the Alexandro Quadran. So they figured out that there is a surprising find in their latest paper, which is OpenAI's O1 researching, a reasoning high. So there are like different levels of reasoning. OpenAI reasoning high, O1 reasoning high, only hit 30% on SWE bench verified. So now SWE has got two kind of data set. One is the SWE bench. The second one is the SWE bench verified, which is like the distilled or more cleaned up version of SWE benchmark, far below the original claim, which is 48.9%. So what is more interesting is that Claude achieves 53% in the same framework. Now the most important thing here is what they claim as a framework. So whenever these LLMs are being used for SWE benchmark, they are not being used exactly as the LLM in itself. They use some kind of a scaffolding method. The scaffolding method is kind of like an agentic environment where the LLM gets an opportunity to follow a workflow and then solve the particular GitHub issue. So the scaffolding method is something that you need to keep in mind. So something's off with O1's enhanced reasoning. What is going on here? We tested O1 with Orlands AI, which is, uh, which is, which is a company that has got its own scaffolding method, which is open hands where LLMs have complete freedom to plan and act. One of the important agentic behaviors and also the reasoning models everybody is excited about is that they can plan and act. Currently, the best open source framework available to solve SWE bench issues, which is the this one, this is, this is the open hands, which is the best available framework to uh, solve the SWE bench, which is what I mentioned as scaffolding method very different from agentless. Agentless is what OpenAI picked. This is what is the current best method, open hands. Uh, why did they pick this one? So now if you go to the leaderboard of SWE bench, uh, verified bench, now you can see three different toppers, the leaderboard toppers. The first one is Amazon Q developer agent. <laughs> no idea who's using it. Maybe it's only within the Amazon AWS ecosystem, the maybe the bedrock ecosystem. The second one is Devlo, which is again not open. The only open method is open hands plus code act, which is powered by Claude 3.5 Sonnet 2024, 10, 2022. So this is the newer Claude 3.5 model, which is combined with code act, which is combined with open hands. This is the best one, like 53%, but OpenAI did not use it in their own benchmark. If you see the OpenAI benchmark that they reported, you can see that they used a different one and they claim that they've got like 41% which is the best in this case, 41% O1 preview, O1 preview post mitigation, O1 preview pass one. Now what is happening here is what everybody has been wondering. So you can see OpenAI mentions that this pick is due to agentless being the best performing open source scaffold. This is what OpenAI claimed. They are not saying open hands is the best one. They're saying agentless is the best one, but that was not real. However, this report is from December 5, 2024, open hands held the top position on SW bench leaderboard since the 29th of October. So then why pick agentless? Now, if I have to give a benefit of doubt to OpenAI, it is completely possible that their team was working on this benchmark. And then later on, on December 5th, 2024, 
open hands became the topper if i have to give benefit of doubt if i really think they are you know they're diligent researchers they don't want to like fudge numbers if i have to give that benefit of doubt i would say that you know people sometimes work on benchmarks it happens with i'm a data scientist it happens a lot in my line of work we work on some kind of uh, you know cost estimation and a few weeks later somebody would say okay there is a mistake and that mistake would have naturally happened because somebody would have later on updated the data set where we wouldn't have known that we wouldn't have updated the chart so this is me putting open ai like at, at the fair place okay but that's not what the video is about so then why pick agent less and uh, this is exactly where uh, these researchers are trying to understand and uh, they are trying to answer that agent less employs a three phase process one is uh, localization repair and patch validation without letting the llm decide the future actions so now agent less is what open ai picked open hands is what the leaderboard topper is now about agent less what they are saying is that they agent less as a framework the scaffolding framework does not let the llm decide the future actions it itself does all these things localization repair and patch validation wherein whereas in open hands llms have the complete freedom to plan and act truly a blessing for reasoning models unless could it be that agentless's fixed approach favors models that memorize swe bench repos but why does open ai o1 struggle with true and open ended planning despite its reasoning capabilities we don't have a definite answer to this yet we believe we have a fundamental problem with how reasoning heavy models operate as agents a challenge that could reshape our understanding of test time compute we are working endlessly on this trying to uncover the truth we have open source the traces traces is like the process of how the scaffolding has happening so that everyone in the community can take a look at them and discover what went wrong and the data set has been shared here so you can go to hugging face data set uh, and then see it i will link it in the youtube description now this is not the end of it so what ideally they are trying to say is that the framework that open ai picked definitely favors open ai otherwise nobody is going to pick that framework and then publish it on a paper and then make it as part of the press release it's quite obvious now what they are saying is that maybe the framework that open ai picked does not do justice to what the capability of llm is this is my understanding primarily because maybe it favors these llms that actually memorizes these repos that's why when the task has been translated to real world these models do not hold the reality of what is happening because it's not part of the training data maybe it did not memorize some reason there because like i said swe bench is basically solving github issues if the llm already knows the github repo well then maybe it is a totally different game altogether so that could be happening here so we have got the the framework here like the traces here so you can go see a uh, lot more details i might dive deeper into it later but there is one more researcher from the same group trying to answer the same question i often get asked this question why is owen not so good on open hands but their official report shows a decent swe bench and according to these this researcher in this particular case reasoning models like owen did pretty well in swe bench if if they use a workflow based scaffold like agentless the scaffold itself already decomposes the problem for the model in this case so so what they're trying to say is it's not just the capability of the model that is helping in uh, achieving whatever 48% in this case but it is the scaffold like the method that they've chosen in this case the challenge of solving a github issue is decomposed into multiple different prompts that given the files in the repo which file is most likely to be relevant in solving a github issue model needs to select a few files given the contents of a selected file which function is more likely to be relevant need to perform edits on model selects a few function given these selected files and functions context that is part of the context now generate an edit that tries to fix the original issue model outputs a diff code if you have used cursor you would know diff code or like in github changes directly do this multiple times to have multiple patch candidates this is kind of the test time scaling thing then ask the model to generate test and execute the test to re-rank the final patch for submission so as you can see here this is the overview of agent list so you have step 1 step 2 step 3 and it localizes the top n files then you know the function is selected from the function the patch is generated then the final issue is being re-ranked and then submitted the patch in contrast code act in open hands 
does not have this human crafted workflows. Instead, it just tells the model, here is a file editor, here is a bash terminal, you can go and execute arbitrary code, feel free to do anything you want. And reasoning model like OpenAI is pretty bad at it. That's exactly why it is not scoring a lot. And see the thread and release trajectories, which is on the Hugging Face dataset for more details. I have a theory. The amount of information provided in the context differs significantly for these two types of agent scaffolds. And this causes the reasoning models like OpenAI O1 to perform differently or in this particular case to underperform. Reasoning models are trained to think hard by solving extremely challenging math or lead code problems. One commonality for these problems is they are usually self-contained. All the information required to solve the problem is given beforehand. Like if you have to ever solve a math problem or lead code problem, you are given the entire problem statement. All you have to use, bring your programming skills to solve it. Unlike, and because of all this information is available, you can likely get better at solving the task simply by thinking. But real world problems are different. To solve a GitHub issue, you need to gather context, relevant code, documentation, etc. because it is very likely that the GitHub issue description is not self-contained because if GitHub issue description is self-contained, nobody is going to raise the GitHub issue in the first place unless until you just won't raise an issue. This not only requires the model to one, solve a problem when complete information is provided, but it also needs the ability to proactively gather more context. Scaffolds like agentless use a decomposed prompt plus workflow to fix one, context gathering for these reasoning models. So the model can just focus on what they are trained to do, which is best for them, which is thinking to think and come up with a code for a generic scaffold, like open hands code act. When the agent fails to do context gathering, no matter how strong its ability to think it is likely not going anywhere. You can't solve a problem by thinking, imagining if you do not even know what exactly the problem is. That is exactly why on open hands, with open hands, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is not a thinking model, does extremely well because the model has been given that liberty to go plan, do everything, but nobody is guiding them. Nobody is giving this framework. Nobody is telling them, okay, do this first, do this first, do this first, and giving this um, human directed workflow while opening a one picked agent list where this is possible. Now you might argue that this is okay for coding related task, which also means this is not going to straight away translate into a different, let's say domain, like a chemistry, you want to like model protein modeling, or you want to like find something for bioscience and all these kind of things. So I think the jury is still out there. I'm not going to say open AI outright lied, blatantly lied because they picked a different framework, but now you might argue that they definitely picked a framework that favors them. And uh, open AI open is not as good as, you know, what, uh, the model suggests open a suggests. I had the same problem with O3 when I announced the award winners. A lot of people said, why did you not pick O3? In my personal opinion, O3 seems like hyped up model. In fact, personally speaking, the ARC AGI score that they got with O3 is quite controversial. A lot of people are saying that, you know, o O3 has been ex exclusively fine tuned with ARC AGI data, which is what we do not do in data science because which is what we literally call as benchmark leaking. But now everybody seems to be okay with that. So I personally feel O3 could be hyped up, but O1 seems to be a good model. But now there is a controversy around O1 benchmarking in itself. I'm sorry for this huge readout video. I know a bunch of people would come and say that, hey, you literally read the tweet. But I think the tweets ha have given us enough context to understand two different scaffolding methods two different frameworks. One works kind of very well with open or uh, normal models, which is the open method, which is open hands. The other one seems to be like working well with the reasoning models, but I'm not sure if it would translate with another reasoning model or if it is something that open AA exclusively picked because they score well on the benchmark. Either way, let's know, let's wait for open AA to come back to us and then say what has happened. But if you have any thoughts around this kind of scaffolding method, or if you are using one of these models, O1 Pro, O1 Preview, O3, let me know in the comment section. See you in another video. Happy prompting.